Shot 10 of upshot knot hole formed such a wave and drag type targets were damaged much more heavily than by similar overpressures from shot 9, which had an ideal wave form. For example, on upshot knot hole, jeeps were exposed in both shots 9 and 10 to overpressures of approximately 9 psi. On shot 9, only moderate damage. On shot 10, a low burst, the damage was extremely severe, second in the megaton range. For example, the teapot buildings were to be exposed to a positive shock phase duration of less than one second at 3 to 7 psi, in the first daytime tower shot ever fired at the Nevada test site. While the expected yield was 28 kilotons, radiochemical analysis indicated a yield closer to 22 kilotons. Although it was anticipated that most specimens would be lost, all except those in the cab were recovered. Observations indicate the greatest metal loss was 1.15 inches on the radius of the closest aluminum sphere. Cloud growth studies were made throughout the teapot series. The life history of each atomic cloud was recorded by time-lapse photography from birth to eventual dissipation by winds at altitude. Analysis was made of the influence of weather parameters on cloud evolution. Therefore, on development shots, Turk and Apple I, blast measurements were made from parachuted canisters and by rocket-laid smoke trails and shock photography. Analysis of these data indicated that the desired test conditions would occur at the altitudes of interest. Low-altitude device, WASP Prime, was airdropped to burst at 800 feet above terrain or about 5,000 feet above mean sea level, and the effects and yield were measured. Predictions for the high altitude burst indicated a slight increase in the lethal radius of thermal radiation, a small decrease in the radius of lethal blasts, and a significant increase in that of nuclear radiation. 